بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما روى الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب وله وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور سابقوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة عرضها كعرض السماء والأرض أعدت للذين آمنوا بالله ورسله ذلك فضل الله يؤتيه من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم صدق الله العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى as he sent us to this world never left us without proper information of what our life is all about. Never left us in darkness to try to decide on our own on what are we supposed to do and what are we are not supposed to do. One of the most important facts of our life that many times we tend to forget and sometimes we don't even like to be reminded of <clears throat> is that we came into this world without our own willingness or permission or choice and we will leave this world without our own willingness, permission or our choice. No one in this universe can claim 
that they will live forever. In fact, after a certain age, a person starts waiting for his death himself also. Uh, I think I need to leave now. If we are to think about our souls, when is it that we want to leave? If today someone will ask us, when do you want to leave? It will be a very difficult question to answer. If you are having a difficult life, you say, I wish I can leave right now. But leaving this world right now, would it give you better life over there or will be a worse life over there? Have you thought of that too? A person who's tired of his life because of the worldly hardships and difficulties he's facing in his or her life and thinks of committing a suicide, is that person going to a better life or worse life? If you cannot handle this one, how would you handle that one? And the fact is, we all will leave one day. Look at your loved ones around you. They all will leave one day. And no one knows who will leave first, regardless of our ages. Whether I would leave first or my parents will leave first. Or I would leave first or my children will leave first. No one knows. We see those incidents day and night. So it's a fact of our life that we all have to leave this world. Now imagine if a person is living only for this world, how sad it would be for that person to leave this world. If a person, his whole life is only to live in this world, that's all. His whole life is just to enjoy this life. When the hereafter comes, we'll deal with it at that time. Don't remind me of it right now. Don't scare me. I want to enjoy my life. Which means I will deal with it as it comes. This person may be very brave. And maybe he'll tell the angels that send me back. I'm not ready. Or I'm going to demand Jannah by force, even if I don't deserve it. And no one can send me to the other side. And if that is not the case, and we know for sure is not the case for anyone, regardless of who that person may be, then why are we not preparing ourselves for that life? We can't deny that we have to go. We can't deny that we cannot demand it by force once we go over there. So then, what are we waiting for? Why are we taking such a big chance with our life over there? وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهُ وَلَعِبُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that this worldly life is nothing but an amusement and play. The next life, the final abode is the real life. That is the real life. If we are preparing so much for the short life, then what, is, what are we going to do in that long life? I want to secure my home, my job, my peace of mind, my family. I want to secure all of that in this life. Then don't we need it over there? Don't we secure, don't we want to secure all of this for the next life there? For the real life about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ If you're looking for the real life, that will be your real life. This is only a transit. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, 
that my example in this world is just like a person who was traveling and for some time he found a shed of a tree so he went and he sat under the tree resting for a short time then he will continue his journey this is our life keeping that in mind as we say that this life is just a transit you are at the air, at the, at the airport you are at the train station you are at a bus station somewhere where you're waiting and you are just waiting for your bus to arrive for your train to come for the plane to you for for, you, for the call to be made to get into the plane to board the plane and that's it that's it you're leaving it is truly the reality of this life we all are just waiting for our time to come and we will leave <coughs> regardless of what you are busy with i'm going to pay my bills or i'm going to work i am going to the most important meeting in the world if the angel of death would come going to, that mean you are leaving right now you tell him i'm going to that meeting just give me time to come out of the meeting sorry too late give me time to go and make my final will to my family oh they don't know where i keep my money where is my assets they don't know who i owe what just at least give me that time to go back and talk to them and let them know too late awalam nu'ammirkum ma yatadhakkaru fihi man tadhakkar quran is speaking to us did not we give you enough time that if you wanted to accept the reminders you would have accepted it during this lifetime awalam nu'ammirkum did not we give you enough life ma yatadhakkaru fihi man tadhakkar that a person who would wanted to accept the reminder he would have taken it during this lifetime during the time that he was given so we are in transit where are we coming from and where we are heading to this is another fact that i like to remind especially to i see mashallah a lot of my young brothers and my children we need to remember if we are in transit over here where we are coming from and where are we heading to quran tells us that also when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created sayyidna adam alayhi salatu was salam and he created our mother hawa we may say our grandparents and rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not even use the word grandparents he used the word father and mother he said your father is adam and your mother is hawa when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created our father and our mother where did he ask them to reside did he send them to some desert that start building your home and planting the seeds no Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Adam and Hawa reside in Jannah. Wa ya Adam uskun anta wa zawjuka al-Jannah. O Adam, you and your wife stay in Jannah. Fa kula minha raghadan haythu shi'tuma. Keep on eating from the Jannah, from the fruits of the tree. with all freedom whatever and whatever wherever whenever you like to eat no restrictions there was only one restriction of that one tree but live in the jannah this is where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was making us live our father our mother they were the number in jannah what happened then Why did we are how did we end up over here Why are we in this world then Aren't we supposed to be in Jannah our parents were in Jannah we should inherit that home This is exactly what it is We that's our home We are in transit We came from Jannah That is the house that was given to our parents And Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala prepared that house for all of us also each and every one of us rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the hadith any human being muslim or non muslim any human being that is created that comes to existence in this universe 
there is a special Jannah designated for that person. This is in the Hadith. Every human being that is born, there is a Jannah that is designated for this person. The, le the smallest part of a Jannah, the smallest portion of a Jannah any human being would get in the year after is 10 times this, u this universe. That is ready for all of us. Allah says, I already created it for you. It's with your name. There is a sign that this is your home. Adam and Hawa alayhim as were in Jannah. Shaitan did not like to see them in Jannah. Out of his jealousy for human beings, then why did Allah give human being such a high status that malaika are asked to do sujood for Adam alayhi salatu wasalam? I joined the malaika, Iblis. Kana min al-jinn, who was originally from the jinn according to the Quran. Fafasaqa an amri rabbi. He joined the malaika. Why? Because he sees malaika are holding the highest position now. So if I join them, I will also hold the highest position. He is doing the ibadah, pretending he's doing, but he likes to earn his status through that ibadah. And now he finds out, oh, there is someone called Adam here. Malaika are asked to turn towards him and do the sujood. What? I thought I earned the highest status. Now there is someone who's going to earn higher status than me. I'm not going to accept that. Iblis, but do say that. He says, Ana khayrum min Quran. Allah is telling us in his book. What did he say to Allah? Allah says, I told him, come on, do the sajda. As I'm ordering you to do it, he says, no, no. Ana khayrum min. I'm better than him. I'm not going to do the sajda to him. If any of us is supposed to do the sajda for other, he's, do, he's supposed to do it for me, but I won't do it for him. I'm better than him. Who is ordering you? Who is telling you to do it? Rabbul Alameen. But no, I'm not going to do it. And he built that hatred for Adam السلام, in his heart. Now Adam and Hawa are living in Jannah. Day and night. Iblis is plotting against Adam and Hawa السلام, to make sure he would play some trick he would do something by which he will get them out of Jannah. And finally, one day he was able to achieve his goal. Made them eat one haram bite. Just one thing, haram, that got Adam and Hawa out of the Jannah. A simple question that we need to ask ourselves, and especially my young brothers and sisters. A person who gets you out of your own home, the one that makes you lose your home, the one that makes you lose all the comfort of your house, the person who will make you lose the peace of mind, all of your assets, of all of your belongings, and he gets you thrown away in a place where you would only be struggling and going through difficulties, would you call that person your friend or your enemy? And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares in Quran, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوًّا Shaytan is your enemy. Make sure you take him as your enemy. Don't forget that reality of your life. Three realities. Keep them together in your mind. We will have to leave this dunya regardless of who we are. Number two. 
We used to live in Jannah. Shaitan got us out of the Jannah. Number three, inna shaitan lakum aduhun fattakhiduhu aduwa. Shaitan is your enemy. Make sure you take him as your true enemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, as he sent us to this world, Quran says, when Adam and Hawa alayhim salam were living in Jannah, they didn't have to do no work for themselves. Eat and drink from whatever you want. Anytime you want. You don't have to work for it. Everything is already set up for you. You just wish to have something and you will get it. Having the best dresses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when shaitan got them out of Jannah, the effect of that was that they lost their dress. A person who makes you lose even your dress, make you lose your modesty, is he your friend or your enemy? Yes, a lot of time people in our time consider that person to be our friends. The ones that are making us lose our dress in spite of being able to afford it, having it in the closet, but still you don't wear it because losing that dress became something that you can show off with, that something that you be proud of. There is someone who's making us lose our dress. Is that person is our friend of our, or our enemy? There is someone that is making us lose our modesty. Making us lose our modesty. Father and daughters. Mother with her children. The whole family. In fact, even invite the extended family. Because you got a, bought a larger screen. Now your whole basement is a theater. And now invite everyone and keep on watching us. Doing all of that immoral actions right while all of you are sitting. And everyone is enjoying the scene. The one who's making us lose our modesty and haya. Is that one our friend or our enemy? We are looking for happiness. We are looking for happy life. It is a fact. Every human being, young and adult, they want some happiness. At the early young age, my happiness in these toys. As I grow up, then my happiness in a bigger games. Then I grow up, then my happiness in having even something bigger than that. As we grow up and we see now our happiness becomes وَالْعِيَازُ بِاللَّهِ in muharramat In disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is where the deception comes. The one who took us out of Jannah. Pay attention to this. The one who took us out of Jannah. Do you think he would let you go back into the Jannah without trying to stop you from getting in it? His main animosity is that you don't make it back to Jannah. I got you out of it. I'm going to make sure you will not find your way there again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, when you were born, I created your Jannah before you were born. I put a sign on the Jannah with your name and the Jannah is designated for you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I went to the Jannah. I saw the castle of Umar radiallahu anhu. He saw the castle of Bilal radiallahu anhu. There are Everything, all of those Jannahs have been assigned for each and every individual. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, any person who dies without faith, without iman, because that person loses their Jannah, so a believer will get that share of the Jannah. Because those are extras now. Allah had created it for him. You believe, I will give it to you. He can't say, no, no, it was in my qadr that I won't believe. Allah created the Jannah for you. There is two lifestyles in this dunya. That's all. This is the bottom line. There are only two lifestyles in this dunya. A lifestyle that is to please Allah and a lifestyle that is to please shaitan. Through the muharramat, through the haram things that are around us that we are surrounded with, shaitan tempts us with these things to make us feel your happiness will be there. Your success will be over there. These are the two directions he will attack us from. Your happiness and your success. Oh, you will be very happy to do this. 
If you do this, you will be happy. You get into this haram, you will be happy. He got us out of Jannah. Do you think he will be willing to let us go back to Jannah and find our way to Jannah? He is the one who is attacking us. Think about yourself. When was the last time you were attacked by Shaitan? When was the last time that we were attacked by Shaitan? Day and night he is attacking us. Imagine Adam السلام, in Jannah and he attacked Adam السلام. Hawa السلام, in Jannah and he attacked them over there. How much he must be attacking us over here? Now as we are looking for happiness. And when it comes to that enjoyment, that happiness, just enjoyment and just games and playing. Subhanallah, look at the word la'ib. And look today what la'ib means. It's just amusement everywhere. Just watching, watching things and just enjoying our souls. Becoming happy, you don't even play. You don't even do anything. You just spend the money, spend the money for people to play and you just watch and you feel that you're getting happy. Do we really think, do we really think, seriously, we need to ask our souls that are those actresses and actors are going to make us happy, give us a happy life? They don't have it themselves. They are going to give us a happy life. Do we think this gold and silver will make us happy? Do we think our phones and our watches will make us happy? Do we think that watching the movies and the shows will make us happy? Watching the games and then watching all kind of wrestlings and boxings, those things will make us happy. Is this is where our true happiness is? People who are doing it, they are not happy. How would you be happy? This is the true deception of shaitan where he gets involved in all of these things and make us forget the true happiness. And that is, where is the true happiness? The true happiness in our hearts being connected with Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believe me, travel the world, open any scrolls that you find anywhere in, buried in the deserts, in the mountains, in the caves. Find the wisest people that can give you best advices. All the divine books, the summary of all of that is, no one can tell you that there is happiness anywhere other than in your connection with Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the true happiness. You will never ever find that happiness anywhere else. When a person who's being turned away from every door, just think about this man. A person that every person in the world will turn, will close his door on this person. And any time he goes to any person, he will be turned away. And no one would like to talk to this person. He is being looked down at. He is being humiliated. He doesn't have a penny in his pocket. He cannot offer a piece of bread to eat. He does not even have a sip of water to drink. If this person can just turn to Allah and he said, Allahu Akbar, with that connection in his heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this person will even be happy in this moment to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doesn't care of what he's leaving behind in his dunya. But you wear a golden ring that may worth half a million dollars because of the special gold and the diamond that's in it. Do we really, really think that that golden ring is going to make me happy? If you take that ring out of your finger, put it in my finger, with all the problems that I'm suffering in my life, it's going to make me happy. Go and give that ring to a mother who have lost her son. Tell her that this is the golden ring that will make you happy. What I'm going to do with the golden ring? Throw it in the garbage. I need, I'm looking for my son. A person who lost his family, do you think that golden ring will make him happy? A wife who lost her husband, do you think that golden ring will make her happy? Not one. Put ring all those golden rings in all ten fingers. There is no happiness in these things. The happiness is when the person will turn to Rabbul Alameen. As Umm Salama radiallahu anha says, I heard this dua from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that whenever you face a difficulty in your life, Whenever you face a difficulty in your life, you turn to Allah and say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allahumma ajurni fi musibati wa khlufli khayran minha. He said, recite this dua and Allah will give you happiness. 
will give you better replacement than what you have lost. Um Salama radiallahu anha says, when my husband passed away, Abu Salama, when my husband passed away, I hesitated making this dua. I knew the dua. I hesitated. Why? The dua says, Ya Allah, reward me in this hardship and give me a better replacement than what I lost. A woman, it's difficult for her to think that what could be a better replacement than what I lost if I lost my husband. Um Salama radiallahu anha says, then I said, I'm going to keep my trust in Allah and recite the dua that I learned from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after some time, I was married to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Became Umm al -Mu'mineen. This is the true happiness when the person's heart is connected to Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very briefly, I'm going to just share this last hadith with you. But it's an incident that is mentioned in the hadith. That will give us a true understanding, especially for my young brother. So, a young boy in the pre-Islamic days, whose name was Zaid, father's name is Haritha. He was kidnapped from his people. Around seven years old, young boy, seven years old, he is kidnapped. Imagine what would be the situation of the parents, the father and the mother, the rest of the family members, brothers and sisters. Mother is crying day and night for her son. She is missing her son. I don't know what situation he's in. I don't know what he was doing now. I don't know what people, how people are treating him. Are they feeding him? They are not feeding him. Is he healthy? Is what? How is he doing? Day and night, mother is thinking about her son and crying. And finally, after some years, this boy somehow he was sold as a slave. And long story short, he ended up with Khadija radiyallahu anha in Makkah Mukarrama. Khadija handed him over to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Some people came from that tribe. So they came for Hajj. After, during the time of Hajj, they heard that there is a man in Mecca whose name is Muhammad. He's inviting people to Islam. And then they also heard about his family. And he has a young boy who's a slave to him. His name is Zaid. Zaid? What's his father's name? Zaid bin Harith. What's his story? As they heard the story, they said, Oh, this is the boy that was kidnapped from our tribe. Quickly, they went back home and then formed the relatives of this young boy. Of course, what do you think will be the next thing? The happiest day of their life. Whoa, we found where our son is. Right there. Father, uncle, and the brother. They all came to Makkah Mukarrama. Looking for the house of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As they arrived in the house of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they knocked at the door. Muhammad? Yes, I'm Muhammad. You have a slave young boy whose name is Zaid, yes? His, name is, his father's name is Harissa, yes? So now, all of, one of them says that I'm his father. My name is Harissa. He was kidnapped. And now we find him after all of, these, all of these years. His mother has been crying day and night for him. Please accept any ransom and allow, him, allow us to take, us, to take him with us. We will pay you any price you would ask for. Ask for any price. Imagine someone comes and tells you that would you like to sell your house? I don't know. Oh, I'll give you whatever price you ask for. As for millions, I'll give you that price. But I want your house. As for whatever you want, oh Muhammad, we will pay you for it. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not say, give me a few days to think about. Oh, I'm going to consult some of my family members. I'm going to think what I want to do about it. Come, relax. Come inside. Sit down. And I'm going to call the young boy to you. If really he is your son, I'm not a person who would sell the son to his father. I'm not that person who would sell a son to his father. If you, you see him, that's your son. Talk to him. If you offer him to go back with you, if he agrees to go back with you, I don't want a single penny from you. Take him for free. But if he decides to stay in case, if he decides to stay, I'm not going to force him to go away because I took him like my own son. You have, you have been more than fair. They went in. They're sitting there. And they're happy. They got what they wanted. And here Zaid comes in. Dad, uncle, brother. They all hug him. Imagine the happiness of that day. And as soon as they hug him and dad is crying and says, Zaid, 
Congratulations, Muhammad accepted to send you with us and for free. He's such a kind man. He doesn't want a penny for sending you back and for releasing you. And Zaid says, yes, dad. But you know, I don't feel like I want to leave Muhammad. What? Your mother is crying for you all of these years. We all are doing so much to get you back. I know, I know. But the things that I have seen in Muhammad, I know I can never find it anywhere else. So therefore, I would rather stay with Muhammad, give my mother my salam, and tell her, if she wants, she can come and visit me anytime. I'm more than happy to see her anytime she comes over here. But I cannot leave Muhammad even for a day. Zaid, that young boy did not leave Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even for his father and mother and his freedom and tribe and enjoyment. Are we leaving the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just for our games and our amusement and our entertainment? At a time when this is the time for us to be strong in following Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So as Zaid, when he stayed around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he realized that even my parents cannot be better than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for me. If we follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, today at a time when he's being accused from every angle that he is this and he is this and he did this, if we live that life and we show people what Muhammad made us and by following his teachings, what did I become even after 1400 years when I followed his teaching? This is who I became. Everyone, I'm sure, would want to be the follower of that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah make us the true messengers of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and a representative of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, especially in this part of the world. Yaqul Allah jalla wa ala fi kitabihi al-aziz. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Ya ayyuhu.